Good day and welcome back to the Pin Podcast. I'm your host of Pin Up Miami and here I try to bring a modern living with a vintage flair. And if you want to follow on all the follow back on all the old uh, guests or new guests, follow us at the Pin Podcast official on Instagram and my page at Pin Up Miami. And I just want to say thank you. We're on episode 14, and it means so much that all of you are listening, uh, subscribing, hitting like. Um, you could follow me on YouTube if you want to see my guests in person or see me. It's up to you. <laughs> and uh, if you're watching us on iTunes, Spotify, just subscribe and rate us, and it will be greatly appreciated. Thank you all. Today, I have a very special guest. She is so beautiful inside and out. <laughs> her name is Judy, Judy Justice. Her Instagram ah. is at Judy Justice. And uh, she runs, founded and runs uh, PA Liberty Bells, which we'll get into if you haven't heard of them. Really great. Mm-hmm. And uh, Judy is like, I could say she's like well-rounded from roller derby to modeling to helping out in the community in a very big way. Um, even behind the scenes that people don't know, she helps out so much and she's truly beautiful person. So Judy, welcome. It's such a pleasure to have you. Hi, Jen. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited. I feel so honored and what a welcome. My goodness. (laughs) Of course you deserve a grand welcome. (laughs) So tell us who is Judy? Introduce yourself Uh, to the listeners. So I am Judy Justice. I am president and co-founder of the Pennsylvania Liberty Bells Pinup Club. Uh, we are entering our third year um, of existence. We're a Pen- yeah, yay! Um, we're a Pennsylvania-based pinup club, but we have girls from all over. Um, we have members in New Jersey. We recently had a member from New York that just moved over to California, so we have California representation. Um, We have local girls like Delaware, New Jersey. We've had girls from Virginia, Maryland. So we've had a pretty far reach on our membership. Um, Right now, we're, I believe, at 26 bells in the group. So it's exciting. And every bell I meet is great. I I had the the pleasure of going to pinups at the zoo up in in Pennsylvania, and it was so much fun. The first zoo of the country in Philly. And it was really nice. Like, I, I... I was able to stay with you guys and the first night I was out to dinner with you and it was yeah. amazing. I had so much fun. And Boy, did so we make great. you walk a lot, didn't we? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I got my steps if I counted steps. <laughs> you definitely got your work out that evening. <laughs> yes. Uh, you know, it's because here in, in, in South Florida, everything is car, like our, 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 our system here is not really that great to use public transportation. I think the only time I've ever used it was anytime the Miami Heat win and there's a festival, you have to take the yeah. tri rail. But I always feel like it's going to tip over. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I get it. You know, you have a metropolis like Philly, you can walk just about anywhere or public transportation. You get, there's every mode of transportation here. But uh, Bellini, our hostess that evening, who uh, hosted you that night, yes. one of my family. Uh, she's a native New Yorker, so yeah, she was all a lot. About <laughs> yeah, she was all about the walking, and I'm like, uh, our guest isn't from a walking neighborhood, <laughs> so right. I think we walked something like four miles from like the restaurant to the nightclub that we went to. <laughs> yes, I was shocked. I was like, because I asked, I was like, is it normal to walk? Because I mean, I didn't complain because if it was normal, I didn't want to seem like. <laughs> I'm, I'm well, tired. in her defense to Bellini, it is normal to walk. We don't <laughs> typically walk that far here in Philly, but, you know, we've, we've grown accustomed to doing a lot of walking with Bellini. So, and I guess right. it's, you know, it's a little exercise. So that's a good thing. But she was amazing. Her dog is beautiful. Uh, yeah, she's super nice. Dopey. Yeah, <laughs> she's, such a, she's such a doll. She actually just hosted uh, a few of the Bells and I for my birthday at um, Ocean City. She and her, husband, her and her boyfriend have a house down there. So that was fun. Oh, nice. She's such a hostess. I just love her to death. She's, she's a great. magician. <laughs> yes. Yes. And a burly. Did you know she's a burlesque dancer? Yes. Mm-hmm. And works for a newspaper. She's And great. a journalist. Yes. All the yeah, bells we, are all incredible. They all have, like, talents. Really, yes. We have some really, like, powerful, well-rounded women in this group. I'm, like, impressed by them. Yeah, they blow me away all the time. 
<laughs> so tell me, before we move on, first I got to say I love what you're wearing. Thank you. So this is the Annette dress um, from Wax Poetic Clothing. Uh, Joanna Stahl's a dear friend of mine. And if you don't already know this, I get her to style me for almost all of my events. So I usually just reach out to her, Joe, I need an outfit. Help me figure this out. And she always puts me in the most flattering, complimentary dresses. So I am a huge, huge fan of Wax Poetic Clothing. And they just dropped some amazing stuff for Halloween. And I think I purchased every dress that she dropped. Um, she's got some really hot stuff coming out for the Christmas season. So, yeah, I I just send her the emoji all the time. Just take my money. Just take it all. Um, but the dress, yes, it's the Annette dress. And it's got pockets. So it's like an amazing, comfortable dress. It's very flattering. It's one of my favorite dresses. Dress with pockets. Yeah, everything with pockets is amazing, right? Every dress with pockets. And I love her robe. She came out with this, like, lacy robe. The Lydia, yes. Oh. I have it in black. And it is amazing something like six yards of fabric i'm like Oof. i'm just gonna wear this around the house all the time just in hollywood glam all the time all the time i wore my caftan for it that was leopard i was like what do i wear to to talk to judy i was like i'll wear some leopard and some big black thing can never go wrong with leopard i am a big big fan of leopard so yes. you're good you're good <laughs> So Judy, tell me about how you started in pinup on yourself. Your your um your journey of how well I'm interested to know. Yeah, it's kind of funny because my love of pinup started years ago. Um, when I was significantly younger. Um, we won't age ourselves, although the grades are coming in, and I'm welcoming these. Um, my mother was very much the like June Cleaver type mom. Um, you know, always like the house was pristine and she was always in dresses and she taught me how to use heels at like seven. Um, so I was very much in her closet um, and she's always the like model hostess. You know, she'd always have her apron on and everyone that would come to the home, she'd tend to, you know, with all the grace. And she was like this model, you know, June Cleaver mom. And so it was kind of instilled in me very early. Um, and then I've just kind of evolved. Like in my twenties, I found the love of like, uh, like the rockabilly look, you know, obviously the icon, Rosie the Riveter, that was like the one. And then as I got older is when my interest really peaked. Once I started figuring out my likes and dislikes and, and styles, I, I just kind of felt like pinupping definitely captured um, my essence, you know, this huge personality and gave me all the reasons to I always be dressed up extra and you know, yes. it is, it is dress and pin all the time. So I'm like, I go to work dressed and pin up. So, you know, it's my day to day, every day look. It's not just an occasional look. I exist it and all the time. And you're you can't office. really tell me now it's my time, but I have like a whole like big old bun happening to the side, very Spanish. Yes. Um, but it is getting a little dark out here. So, <laughs> and your office, you have the, the cutest office. Isn't it amazing? <laughs> so, <laughs> I love my office. Um, so, I'll tell you why my office is the way it is. So I work for um, Northern Children's Services, which is a behavioral health um, and residential facility for children and uh, homeless teenage moms. So as the landlord to the Generations Program, I'd often have the girls come over, which are my residents of teenage moms. Um, they'd stop by my office and just, you know, we'd talk about the rent and different things that they wanted to do. And they'd always have their little ones with them. So I wanted my office to feel like a living room. I wanted it to be a very welcoming and inviting space. Mm -hmm. um, of course, I'm a huge fan of mid-century modern. And so um, along with a couple other friends locally and a few events, I started picking up all of the pieces that are in my office. And eventually I dwindled down to a very small desk that's kind of tucked into a pocket corner of my office that unless you walk in you don't actually see where my desk is and the rest of my office is all vintage furniture set up like a living room have the carpet have the mid-century modern table have grandmom and grandpop's chairs you know like the whole so it is it's it was more about making it a really homey environment for the kids um and we do have like a sanctuary model so if a child just wants to, or even a staff just needs to just go talk to someone, you offer them a space to be. And so I just made sure that my office is always very welcoming and inviting. And everyone calls it, it's like the living room of, of our building. <laughs> oh, yeah, because I always see your office of the day pictures there and your outfit of the day picture. I think I said that yeah. right. And yep, yep. Uh, I just love the office. And it's so, I love now, I even love it even more now knowing why it's the way it is. 
Oh, wow. <laughs> it's all about just making it a really comfortable environment for them. So it starts with my office. And, and it's kind of evolved. I have like fellow coworkers that now have like sofas in their offices and recliners in their offices. But that's really good. Thing about my agency. <laughs> yeah, but that's the best thing about my agency is that they really welcome um, folks making their workspace very homey and very inviting. So it absolutely just lends for like the best decor everyone's like trying to top each other and i'm like you guys have years to catch up with all of the stuff i have in my office <laughs> so since you work a lot with the community that's why your 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 passion with community service blended into when you started the bells yeah so um funny enough i actually was before i'm um, getting involved in pinup i was actually a roller derby um skater and i started my career in derby much later in life um and I tore my ACL and then I retore it and I sprained my meniscus on my right knee. So it was time to get off the skates. Um, but during the time of Derby, we had connected with a group called Distributing Dignity, which you know, I'm sure very familiar with. We, the Bell, highly endorsed Distributing Dignity. I've personally been working for them for years, you know, with them for years since I was in Derby. Um, so that was a group that I just knew I wanted to keep attached to. Um, so a little about a little about DD is they are a nonprofit um, based out of New Jersey and it's just two owners, um, two women. They have a warehouse in Jersey. They, they run out. They collect um, new bra and panties with tags and feminine hygiene products, un, unopened feminine hygiene products. And what they do is they provide it for homeless shelters. Um, they well, for women's homeless shelters, they provide it for women that are coming out of prison, girls that are aging out of foster, um, medically bed bound, catastrophically displaced. So they really do focus on helping women with just the basic life essentials. Just you, you've had that moment when you're in the ladies room and you get your friend, you did not expect it. And you're hoping that knock, knock the lady in the store next to you has something that they can help you with. Mm -hmm. Um, so that push to really empower women was why I gravitated to distributing dignity. And I'm like, all right, I already love doing this. So let's, let's do something bigger. And so when I had decided to start the bells, I wanted to have a group that was always of service. Um, that's actually one of our, our little lines amongst ourselves, you know, be of service. And Sophia and I, a uh, little Lucy May, the vice president, mm -hmm. we had talked about what we wanted this pinup group to be. And so one of the things that we had talked about was we wanted it to be a very welcoming group. We wanted it to be for, uh, for pinups that had any level of experience, whether they had none, whether they had, you know, extreme modeling, you know, we wanted it to be a very welcoming space. Um, both she and I had experienced rejection um, in a told that you don't have enough experience as a pinup or, you know, you need more social media following to be part of our group. And that wasn't what it was about. For us, it was about supporting women, getting together with like-minded women um, that really loved the lifestyle and love the culture, but also wanted to do a service. So that's kind of where the idea and the concept of the bells really grew. Um, and so we do, we focus on four platforms every year. Um, we, we do work with the military, um, whether active, deployed or veterans. We work with the elderly. Um, we work with women's services and we work with children's services. So throughout the year, we'll do um, work with different groups that are nonprofit. Um, we try not to collect any money ourselves. We always direct that any funds go directly to them, but we also collect items and support whatever cause or effort that we are working with that specific group. Um, so it's just kind of all meshed together for me. It was just like an easy transition from Derby to bringing this love of helping the community that, you know, evolved into the Bells. And Sophie and I just kind of hit the ground running and we are now knocking on our third year. So I, I am blessed. We started with like, I think it was like 10 or 11 girls and now we're up to 26. And, and we're over. currently taking, yeah, we're taking, we're taking new applicants right now. So I'm excited. You know, there's this love that's, that's growing with the Bells. I'm, I'm proud. I'm so proud. I've loved watching it since the beginning because I've known you since I followed you on Instagram since your derby days. So yeah, <laughs> yes. And you were like goals when I first saw you. I was like, who is she? Aww. Like, and where is she? <laughs> you know, I'm like, I want to be her when I grow up. You know, Aww. it's like certain certain gals that were out there. Um, 
So, you know Susie Dahl from New York? Yes. Uh, paper, um, brown paper bag. Yeah, so there you go. Like, I was looking at, at Susie, and I'm like, God, look at her. She's astonishing. And so I really started following a lot of, like, women of color. And I'm like, oh, there are girls of color in pinup. Oh, so this is just really, it, it's just serendipitous. It's all just kind of coming together. Um, I I can't even express how much I love it. And and when I finally got to meet you, it was like, oh, my God, I met a celebrity. Okay. We met Aviva East. <laughs> that was a year ago. Well, a celebrity. <laughs> Yeah, these are the local like goals. You were like, oh, when I saw you in your black gown, oh, holy cow! I'm like, I'm not worthy. Like the dress I was wearing was not even close to what you had on. I'm like, I need to go back and get changed. This is not okay, girl. You've been beautiful every time I see you, either in picture, in photos, or anywhere. I'm sure you look good in PJs. Thanks. <laughs> when, the hair, when the hair is not, you know, like all over. But yeah, thank you. <laughs> it's a Spanish thing. I feel like having big hair and all over the place when you wake up because I only Agreed. I see that with like all yeah. Spanish people that I know and my yeah. family. Because my hair is not mm-hmm. always like this. It's always like <laughs> yeah, and and you always have like those curls that are in the roots mm-hmm. that you're trying to like battle. Yeah, that yeah, very 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 big hair. Yeah. I love the fact that my daughter has has evolved and let her natural curl come in because she's got the most amazing yes. like oily spiral curls and i'm like i used to look like that when i was younger so yeah we, we do we have like the big hair so <laughs> and then i used you to see you in the 80s the 80s was awful but now <laughs> you had the 80s hair i had the big curly perms Ooh. 80s hair with the aquanet like and like you know, like the whole bang that would go up a couple inches and then down, and like the whole swoop over your eye—that was me. I did that. Ooh, yep. I, 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 can, I can see you roller skating with that on. <laughs> Just I don't know if my mom fit over all of that hairspray. <laughs> I did have a question about your roller derby. What 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 made you get into roller derby? Because when I think of roller derby, I think of pain. But yet I think so of badass pain. women. It's like it's like. <laughs> This okay. So I actually got connected um, with roller derby before becoming a skater. Um, a friend of mine, Nikki, uh, she she actually went to a bout for the Philly Roller Girls, and well, Philly, well then Philly Roller Girls, now they're Philly Roller Derby. Um, and she loved the bout, and she's like, they need some cheerleaders. And so she reached out to me, and in high school, of course, I was a cheerleader, and I'm like. Hell yeah, let's be cheerleaders for roller derby. By the way, what's roller derby? You know, and so <laughs> I went to a bout and saw, and I'm like, oh yeah, I want to be part of this. So after some talking to um, the powers that be and all of leadership at Philly Roller Derby, they allowed us to create a small, um, subtle group of fear leaders. So we were the Philly fear leaders, and <laughs> we just had the whole like tongue in cheek and like, uh, think of like Joan Jett kind of, you know, edgy, like bad reputation. Like that was kind of like how we were. Um, so we sidelined, you know, cheer, cheerleading. And uh, that's my love of Derby grew then. Um, and so after a few years of being on the sideline, I'm like, I want to put skates on. I want to try this. And so Penn Jersey Roller Derby, which was the league that I joined, um, they're co-ed. So one of my friends says, hey, why don't you try... And, you know, Penn Jersey, they, they work well with rookies. And, you know, I had, I get skate, but not skate. Like derby skating is totally different. Um, so I did. I went into the, um, the assessments and injured my ACL. Right in assessments. Injured my ACL. And I was like, all right, still going to it. So I would still went in with the knee brace on. And I just tried to learn as much as I could. Recovered from that. Got on the skates. And then just hit the ground running. It was just like epic. Um, but yes, derby is incredibly difficult. Um, one of the things that I pride myself on is the fact that it was a co-ed. Well, I, it still is. It's co-ed. And so I got to train with the guys and the girls. I got to take hits and learn how to take hits from guys and girls. So my derby wife, which we do have in roller derby, <laughs> um, my derby wife, his name is RJ. Um, so love you, RJ. He actually was uh, in the class before me. So he worked a lot with me and was training me. And so I'm like, RJ, hit me. And he's like, okay. So he'd come flying around and, you know, ram his body into me. And then I'd have like um, another one of the skaters, Michael, who's like six something, 200 plus pounds. I'm like, Mike, hit me. Because I really wanted to learn how to take a hit and not fall. Or if I took a hit, how to get back up. 
And nothing better than having the guys hit you because if you can take one of these big guys down, you can certainly defend yourself out there. And so, and I had like some of the really strong female skaters, like, all right, I need you guys to hit me. Like, I really, really want to try. And it was constantly, constantly falling. And I hurt my coccyx, my tailbone. That was fun. Um, I, I literally injured myself all over, but I just kept going and kept going and kept going. And then one of my very first bouts, one of the guys that I trained with, Mike, I kept saying, I'm like, I'm coming for you. I'm coming for you. And finally, like our second jam, uh, you know, we're both, you know, we're both out there and I managed to just hook him just right on his side and I put him on his back and I'm like, I did it. You know, I'm like, I got my down. It's like 200 pounds. I'm like five one. So I'm like zooming away. He's like, that was wonderful. And I'm like, thank you. But I'm like trying to like, please don't kill me. But yeah, so that's how like intense it was, but it's so much fun. And Truly, like the roller derby community is very much like a huge, gigantic family. And mm. so, in derby, because you skate so close and you are in close quarters and hands are going everywhere, your hands go in places for other people, and other people's hands go in places with you. And you just kind of have to get comfortable. There is no personal space. But there's nothing better than when you're skating in a pack and you know that your team has got your back and you've got somebody on each side of you and you're just building this wall. Like, you got to get through us. So I was a blocker. So I'm like, yeah, you got to get past me to get my jammer. So I I just loved it. And every time I come home with a bruise, I'm like, look, 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 I got another bruise. Look how amazing this one is. You know, I'm like, oh, yeah, I, t- I took that from this person. And you, so the bruises to me were like trophies, you know, and every time I came home with another bruise and I wasn't dead, I'm like, yeah, I did it. You know, so it was, <laughs> it was intense, but it was so much fun. And it really just helped my confidence. And I lost weight with that. And just, it was just like this great energy. And I'm still very much in touch with a lot of my Derby family. Still in touch with my, my bestie, my Derby wife, RJ. Um, but I do, I, I absolutely love them. I still go to bouts on occasion just to go see and scream and cheer them on. It's just so much fun. It's amazing. And what you said, confidence, like one thing that I admire about you the most is that you exude confidence. So I was curious to know, like, and I'm sure everyone listening would like to know, because, you know, we always go through things in life and we want to improve ourselves and not and stop being shy and stop doing, you know, stop holding back. So what were things that helped or what shaped you to become, you know, more confident in yourself and in everything that you do? Was it roller derby? Because you said uh, roller derby or, or so, any advice that you have? Go ahead. I, right, so I can, I can tell you this. If you don't already know, I'm a pretty big personality. I am, I am the baby of seven. And then I have my adopted siblings. So there's 10 altogether. Um, so you learned young, but <laughs> I'm, I'm the baby, right? So, but my mother and my father were both very, um, public people. Um, so my father, um, God rest his soul, he was a guitarist. This was his guitar right here. Um, so he was a performer and he was always on stage and he was the first Puerto Rican, he and his group was the first Puerto Rican, um, group to play at the Smithsonian Museum at, um, Washington, DC. And my mother was very much involved in a lot of like community events and a lot of, um, work with, you know, the impoverished community and supporting your neighborhood and supporting the Latino culture. And then she also was a promoter. So she was also like the MC on stage and organized a lot of events. So I grew up with parents that were very much up and out. Mm -hmm. And I learned that from them. And ironically enough, I was really insecure until like my thirties. And then it just kind of clicked for me. I'm like, I'm living life for me. I'm not living life for anyone else's opinion. Right. So I just kind of, held on to what I learned with my mom and what I learned with my dad. And so a lot of like my stage presence and my really bad jokes when I'm hosting pinup contests, the jokes come from my dad. He was definitely the one that always had jokes and just the big energy on stage definitely came from my mother. So it it was put, it was instilled in me very, very young. Um, And then I kind of fight it down when I was in my you know teens and 20s it was a little weird I was awkward and then my 30s hit and it just kind of livened back up for me and I'm just like I gotta embrace this person and my big energy and you either like it or don't like it you know I'm like there's really no in between like you said um, it's but, your life <laughs> yeah exactly but at the same time it's also been like I don't because my mother very much would take us when we were younger, my mother would take us out to these events. And so if they were doing turkey drives and they were feeding the homeless and they were, you know, working in the community and their uh, neighborhood sweep ups, my mother would have us all out there. So 
it was never a moment of you're not going to roll up your sleeves. You're going to do work. Um, these are your people. These are our family. So we are helping. And that was very, like that was instilled in us so very, very early. Um, and I love that. I love that my mother made sure that I understood that, um, hard work and community togetherness is what makes a person, right? So when you're involved in your community and your environment, you grow as they grow. And it was very easy for me to adapt that mindset in pinupping and with the bells. And I've, you know, I'm notorious for whenever any of my bells are on a stage or on a pinup contest, I will absolutely yell, that's my bell to the top of my lungs. Because here's, here's my opinion. If your president is not your loudest supporter and your biggest supporter, then you're in the wrong club. Yes. Because you need to be with a group that completely supports you and cheers you on to everything you do. Like everything, whether it's pinupping or not. You know, I have Lorna Lilac, who's one of my girls who's been like kicking butt riding her bike. And she's like miles and miles and her time is she's cutting it down. And I'm like, every single time she posts, I'm like, that's my girl. That's right. Kick butt. Like you totally have this. And, and it, and, and it's just riding her bike and she's cycling. But again, if you don't have your president's not supporting you and loving upon you, then you just have the wrong president. You're just not in the right group because there's not a bell that I don't dote upon. And I make it a point to check in with them often. I'll go to all of their social media and I'll make sure I comment and let them know that I love them and I'm thinking about them and reach out to them. Like it, to me, it's important. We call ourselves sisters. You know, the bells yeah. are sisters. We treat each other like sisters. We support each other. And at my darkest time, when I lost my father two years ago, I would not have, been standing if it weren't for my bells. Like I, I hit the worst depression of my life and my dad was everything to me. So I counted wholeheartedly on the bells to get me through it. Obviously I had my family, but the bells are, you know, the, they're women that just love on each other. And I, I can't complain. Like I love every single one of them. There's, there's not one that I just don't simply adore. And they've gotten me through so much that I just, just love them so much more. And I just make sure I shower them back at the same level. It just is. It, it's amazing. Just like um, I've noticed that every time you're in a group, you have that backup. You say in your in your roller derby, you had to make sure everyone is together. So I forgot the name of the player, but so nobody comes in and penetrates. And then you have exactly. this group of girls that they're there so hard. That's something that we all strive for. And I, I applaud you. It's so amazing. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, we've hit obstacles. I think every, every pinup group, you know, goes through every pinup and every pinup group goes through the, their up and downs and you Family have like and friends, you know, you are yeah, with your yeah. brother, sister, son, yeah. you, have, you have your struggles and you have folks that are naysayers and you have folks that are, you know, ter- you know, just ruining your name and just trying to hurt you. But it's like, we rise above that. We don't, we don't engage in that. I don't, I don't do the social media drama. I I don't allow it in the group. Like we are just like no, we rise above that. We this well, social media is not real life, right? So we as women in real life should always be there to support each other. So I try to always stay focused on that. Like I can get really frustrated, but I'll never put it out there. Like no, we I'll I'll, I'll lean on the girls before I put anything else out there. And they've gotten me through so much. So I it's working. It's working. Well, this is why we vibe. I feel like we have the same mentality, just a different state, literally. Yes. Yes. Well, I told you when you got here, you're an honorary bell. I'm like, she's yes, a bell. And I have a t shirt and I have yes, photos yes, in it. Yes, you do. <laughs> I mean, you're like the, you're the, you're the honorary bell in Florida. So now we have a bell in Florida. So it's number 27. There you go. Boom. boom. 27. <laughs> so let me ask you, you're, you're a mother. How do you balance everything? Or are your kids older? <laughs> Well, my kids are older, oh. so this is this is like the time for me to really enjoy life. Um, mm-hmm. So, no, my son is on his own. Um, he actually is very successful in tattooing. Uh, so he's done this piece, and he did my dad's tribute on my arm. Um, my son, my son Michael, has always wanted to tattoo, and so now he's with um, Swagger House Studios, and just he and Ron are kicking butt. He his career is just skyrocketed. Mm-hmm. He bought himself his dream car. He got himself the 2020 Supra. Um, and, you know, so he's a young man. He's he's in his 20s. He's in his later 20s. I'm not going to say my age. Um, but, you know, he's he's single. He's not, in, you know, in any serious relationship. And he's just living his life. So I am like the sideline cheerleader. Like, that's my baby. Yeah, that one right there. He's mine. And my daughter is now um, a rising senior. So she'll be graduating in the spring, God willing, from Temple University. So she, um, 
she's studying to be a physician's assistant, but I think now there might be a change in the career. So my daughter, Melissa, is currently a college student. Um, and she lives at home with me, but she's also, um, she also works as a scribe. So uh, I worked in the ER with yeah. the doctors. So she's fully immersed um, with, with everything that's happening now, COVID. She's, she's very much an essential worker. She's 22. So she's out there in the trenches all the time and she's studying in the medical field. So I have a lot of, you know, time for me. And so it's a little easier for me to juggle. If they were younger, I wouldn't be able to do as much as I do now. But now they're older. I have all the freedom. And you have a tiki bar that you made. I do have a tiki bar. It's a little dark outside. Yeah. I'm sorry. My uh, my patio lights are not on. But you're glowing. Um, <laughs> that little ring light thing happening. Uh, so, yes, the blue flamingo. Uh, that was our quarantiki. Um, so, you know, you're, you're home. You got to got to do something if you're home. Um, and idle hands get put to work. So the mister got out here and started building my blue flamingo. Um, I'm obsessed with flamingos. So, and the posts are blue, so I decided to name her the Blue Flamingo. And it was moved from the front of the yard now to the back of the yard. But I found out that we have a hive of yellow jackets back there behind the tiki bar, so I am not going near it. <laughs> I'm like, okay, they own a yard. They now have a tiki bar. I'll sit in the house. Have fun, guys. <laughs> oh, my, no. <laughs> oh, man. Do, you, do you have any questions for me? Yes. Yeah, so how, how did you get – well, okay. So I know your story prior to um, really becoming Pin Up Miami, but mm-hmm. I am completely just in awe of you. Like, how did you manage to organize Pin Up at the zoo? It's national. Like, this this thing grew from this little to this big and like that. And and it's so, like, in sync. And everyone loves it. Like, oh, we were to hard. Because I feel like I'm, I'm in South Florida, so I don't really, like... Sometimes I feel like I'm excluded of everything. So I um I don't know. It all started because uh, I have Pin South Florida, which is a meetup group. I, I just put up events and just have people join in because there's not really anything down here. <laughs> so um, a lot of the girls couldn't go to Dapper Day because they were they had family. Dapper Day is uh, going uh, Dapper Day out at Disney World. Okay. And uh, a lot of the girls couldn't afford it, even though we're only three hours, three to four hours away. It's like they couldn't afford it, you know, renting a place for like four people of a family. And okay. and I couldn't afford it, even though I'm by myself. So I was like, hi, what can we do that we could dress up? And, you know, I wanted to do something like Dapper Day, but I wanted to make yeah. it more relaxed and more <laughs> accessible. <ahead>. It's okay. <laughs> They're all laughing. Let me sorry. I apologize. <laughs> it's okay. So okay, then we just, uh, we also, I also wanted to do something in the community that every, you know, I didn't think nationally at all. I literally was thinking like, let's do something that people don't do all the time, but people will reminisce and be like, oh my God, I did this as a kid. So the first thing me and a couple of the girls at one of the brun- pinup brunches I hosted it was, um, they said the zoo, we haven't been in the zoo forever. My kids would love the zoo. And I said, well, nice real zoos, like really do take care of their animals. I mean, it's not like Carol Baskin or anything, but. Oh my god! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but so yeah, I just did a pinups at the zoo and I made a flyer and uh, all of a sudden this girl on Facebook and I I kind of hate that I don't remember her name. If I see her picture, a girl, one random person on Facebook messaged me and said, "I want to do the same thing you're doing in Miami, but here." And I said, I started thinking. I'm like, well, you know, I. I don't, I don't put credit in anything that I do. Like, I don't put my logo on anything. You know, pinups at the zoo, I keep it its own thing. Because I, I want to make it a community-based thing. Because yes. I didn't think I didn't think it was going to get as big. So, <laughs> I um, this girl reached out and I said, look, I could help you. I'll make you the flyer. Just, you know, I don't get permission from my zoo. Because my zoo didn't want to, you know, be part of it. But if you get permission right. from your zoo, like, you know. Right. So then I said, you'll be in charge of that, but I'll, I'll, I'll help you promote it and I'll make a flyer. And, and I didn't have a website. It was just two events. But then one of my girls down here, they decided to post it in all those pinup groups on Facebook. Oh my God. No. Literally in, <laughs> in like in a week, I had like 200 requests. I ended up making so many flyers 
And then I said, well, then let me just make a website. And since... uh, Then here's the thing. Yeah. So then, yeah, I I am a little behind right now because of the whole COVID. and, and, And a lot of people are switching their dates and I need to update it. So I feel kind of a little behind, but I guess everyone understands. Yeah. Yeah. Because it right happened. now nobody's going to the zoo, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, that's what happened, and it, I just wanted it to be an event that, like, if you lived anywhere, like the only zoo that uh actually is hosted by the zoo is Alaska. The Alaska really? Zoo reached out to me, and they wanted to be a part of it, and and oh yeah. my god, yeah, so that's th- amazing. You're in Alaska. Oh, and in and you and in um and in and oh my god, in Ireland too. Are you really in Ireland? Yes. Jen, that's wonderful. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. So yeah, that's how, that's how it started, and it just literally blew up. And then I honestly always believe, like how you say about hard work, is like, you know, I I try, you know, I wanted to unite people through the zoo since it started growing, and then uh, I just told people, like like when you reached out to me for the zoo, I told them, okay, this is gonna be you. I don't know the area, so you do everything, and just give me your Facebook link, and I'll link it, and have one place to put everything, and. It's Aww. really been a great method, and and it's just being consistent it. and answering back on time, and and I think you know I try everyone, I give a response to everyone, and I yes. and I did get, and I haven't had any drama because I know some locations have like more than one pinup group because I've learned about so many pinup groups doing pinups at the zoo, right, um, right. you know, but there hasn't been any drama because I make it first come first serve, and that's it. okay, okay, <laughs> that's smart, yeah, that's smart. Yeah, and that way I, it's open for anyone, even people that are individual people that don't know anybody, like how I started my meetup group. I didn't know anybody when I started it. So I tell people, even if you're by yourself, put it out there and see who shows up. You never know. So well, We've had such an amazing turnout every, like the last two that we did, because we didn't get to do it this year. We're, we're actually um, talking about planning ours now. Um but we had like our first year, we had something like well over 20 ladies that came out. And then like the second year we had, we worked with um, the pinups for mental health awareness. Um, and so, I they was there. Joined, yeah, so they joined us and we've actually inherited a couple of the girls as well. Um, so, but it did, it started gaining momentum and we, I was just really blown away. I'm like, wow, this is like, it evolved so quickly and it grew legs so, so quickly. And then I'm like, look at Jen, like she's really kicking butt out there. And so of course I'm like, well, we got, she visited ours, ours first, you know? So that's always my bragging, right? I'm like, we got you first out of all the pinups, you know, all the pinup groups that had uh, for you to come out with, we got you first. So I'm super excited that you had your second year with us. Yes, um, because my goal was uh, the, that year was I want to go somewhere outside of Florida. I went to other places yeah. in Florida, but I'm always in Florida. So I was, then I reached out to you and I was, so hesitant because I was like, this lady's gonna think I'm just crazy. <laughs> I mean, I think you're crazy, but you're amazingly crazy. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a great experience, and I hope in the future my goal is to go to at least one. Or, I wish I could go to more. So, if yeah. anybody's listening in any locations, you want to host me, I'm down to go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I think it's amazing. I love it. It's so much fun. Thank you. And it means a lot. <laughs> Bonding. Like it's such a bonding fun day. And I mean, you you got to experience it in Philly. It's like we would take maybe 15, 20 steps and folks are like, Who are you? Can we take pictures of you? And then I'm like, So she's the national organizer and maybe go take a picture with this, you know, yellow haired beauty over here. But yeah, so it, it was it was kind of amazing to have you there in our second year because people were fami- a little familiar with it with yeah. the first year and then they're like oh we remember you oh and then we had a lot of like the zoo staff come out and they're like yeah we remember this from last year this is amazing and it, it had it, it had grown so quickly we were just i mean we've all said it we're just in complete awe of you i'm like I, do. I look at what you're doing and i'm like this girl's a rock star like, yeah. again you were girls Jen, you were girls i i saw you and i'm like i want to be her I want to do that. <laughs> and that's what well, well, you're saying. That's why I did that uh, Facebook group for just the organizers, because it, and you see in that group, people take it as their own little thing and get ideas like, you know, some locations yeah. get buttons and make somebody in their group makes buttons in mine. Mm-hmm. Like I make hand fans, you know, just cute mm-hmm. things to pass out. It's a great way to promote. Like if you have a group who you are in yeah. the community and it's a great way to promote um, pin up culture because mm-hmm. a lot of people assume pinup is like just stripping because i get that a lot i've had i actually own pinups at the zoo and retro day at the zoo because a lot of people didn't like it so 
But mm-hmm. it's all about oh, it's about education, and that's why I, I mean, I never really whole a whole in a whole changed it to retro day at the zoo because you know my right. love is pin up custom culture yeah. rock and roll yeah. you know so i wanted to keep it but for a few locations i have changed it just to accommodate because you know i do understand that they want to keep it separate yeah because there, there is a stigma and although pin up is so i mean well pin up is such a huge umbrella you have every type of pin up out there there's no like right pin up you know yes. um and i think that that pin upping lends itself to so many levels and so many like creative facets that there is no wrong pin up. You know what I mean? And I think that there's a lot of stigma behind pin up and there's a lot of shaming. But when you really look at the entire culture and you look at like the whole scene of the pin up, it's like, no, it's just a bunch of girls that like to play dress up and really love the, you know, the aesthetic and the lifestyle. And, um, but yeah, you're right. I, I see what you mean about like having the stigma of, pin up and what people associate it to be yeah i've learned that in a couple of events and stuff that i've had to work hard mm-hmm. well girl you are like the like example of a true like cheesecake pin up you are just like I, I i it kills me you make these dresses and i'm like really can i just like send you money and my measurements i want to do like that i want to look like Minnie mouse like come on lady you you do like i swear you're like cinderella's god mom you know the whole bippity boppity boo and then here you go boom she's in this amazing dress i'm like this this woman makes her stop you're gonna love my hispanic heritage dress i've been working on i'm a little behind on my timeline but it'll be up for the middle of hispanic heritage month well it's funny you mentioned hispanic heritage month because peggy pineapple and i are working on a little something on our end for hispanic heritage month so that's funny we'll both have to do a little yeah this is what i'm doing what are you doing yeah, yeah. After this, I'm going to tell you. <laughs> and, um, yeah, uh, so yeah, it's just um, it's just educating people about rockabilly culture and mm-hmm. pinups. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I, do you have anything else for me? Um, so actually, yeah, I, I'll tell you what we're working on right now. Tell me. Um, so again, I told you I'm working for Northern Children's Services. Um, and we recently had some young ladies that came into our agency that were um, trafficked um, and they were from Central American countries. And so as I was working with them and translating, you know, being um, bilingual and whatnot, um, I really, really, really got to get to know the girls a lot more that are in the residential program and just really getting involved with them a lot more. And so then I realized, wow, like, our girls really do need a lot of help. So the Generations program, um, which is the program that I'm I'm focusing on right now, um, they have really young girls. So our girls' age range from like 14 to like 17, and they're teen moms that are homeless. So I was a teen mom, and I have this absolute love and empathy for all of my residents. Like I love love, love these girls and they're silly and they're playful and they're moody and they're cranky, but I get it. You know, as a team mom, I absolutely relate to them. Um, so the Bells decided that we were going to adopt generations. And so that's actually our next campaign that we're working on. Um, so here's the skinny. Um, so the Bells are going to adopt generations. We are focusing our calendar this year on a very specific type of shoot that we're going to do. All the proceeds from the calendar sales are going directly to Northern Children's Services to provide new items for the girls because although folks make donations, a lot of donations that they get are used clothing. And more often than not, you'll find that the donations that we get are clothes that no one should even be wearing. Like, you don't want it anymore because it's filthy. Why would you give it to the girls to wear? You know what I mean? So with that, we've created an Amazon wish list for um, the Generations program. And it literally has everything from bedding down to nursing pads, down to diapers, onesies, clothing for the children, um, toys for the babies, maternity outfits for the mommies, bedroom slippers, because they don't even have bedroom slippers. Um, So we created this monster list on Amazon. And so we're going to push that out. That's going to be on our campaign. We're we're working our Generations campaign. Um, So Anyone can hop on and directly purchase off the Amazon wish list and it'll go right to Northern for the Generations program. The calendar sales is going to go right to Northern for Generations program. 
and working with Distributing Dignity, we're going to get bras and panties and uh, feminine hygiene products. That's going right to the Generations program. So our girls are going to get um, a lot of donations, but it's all new stuff. And that's a rarity right now. Like during COVID, it makes that's it really amazing. hard for people to donate. <laughs> yeah. So again, it's that women supporting women. So um, we want to be the big sisters. We want to adopt this group of girls and we want to show them that you can be a team mom and still be successful. And and grow to be a, a wonderful contributor to your community. Um, I was a teenage mom. Some of my girls were teenage moms and they're biting. They're just chomping at the bit to get this thing going because they do want to work with our teen group at Northern. So that's been in the work for a couple of weeks now. We've been kind of ironing out a lot of details and we're about to roll out the campaign and that'll roll us through for a couple of months since we didn't get to really do a lot of other Stuff. So it's going to tie our women's services and our children's services together because we're also working with babies in the program. And there are some really cute babies. Um, <laughs> so I'm lucky enough that I get to play with the baby. Um, but yeah, so that's that's what our, our next campaign is right now is we're going to be working with our generation program. So it's, you know, women of all generations. Is our... It's amazing. Yes, yes, yes. I yes. love I'm it. So I am so excited about it. And um without getting too much into like the details because you know i want to keep this keep it a you know a secret on what's going to be out there but one of the things we are going to do is ask the residents and we'll keep it anonymous you know because hipaa um but i'm going to ask all my residents to give me a little quote a little something to put in the calendar so you get words from each of our residents that are receiving the benefits of all this love so you know and i when i spoke to the girls they're like miss judy am i going to be in the calendar and i'm like no baby i want your quote in the calendar i can't put a picture of you in the calendar i would love to but i can't um but they're all excited about it. And so I opened up my laptop and I said, so start adding stuff to the wish list. And they're like, well, I want those slippers in red and I want this. And you need to get that baby blanket in pink because there's more girls. And da, 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 da. and I had teenagers <laughs> just all around me. Da, 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 da. And I'm like, just add to the list, add to the list because everything in here, you guys are going to get. I'm like, the goal is to empty the list. That's our goal is everything in there to provide for these girls, everything new because they deserve new items. They deserve a chance to really feel special and loved upon and it's going to be my personal mission to do that oh wow yeah that's amazing that's going to make them feel better like you said moving on in the in, in their life to do more and feel like they're enough yeah and the wonderful thing about the program is that it does teach them life skills so they're not just homeless and living at a group home it's they're they're going to school. They're they're getting their education. They're learning how to cook. They're learning how to keep a home. They're learning how to build resumes, apply for jobs. Like our residential program, like our program evolves through different stages. So it's Gen One, Gen Two, and um, New Generation. So New Gen literally gets them to their twenties when they're like ready to move on their own. Mm -hmm. So it is an evolution of the Generations program. So right now I'm honing in on my younger girls because um, they're the ones that need the most. But each of the girls can go through this program and really learn a lot and gain and we hold them accountable. So you have chores, you have chores to do, you have homework, you have homework to get done. You got to go to work, what's work schedule. Um, you know, they get privileges, they get to go out, they have, you know, different things that they did that they do together. Um, the campus is huge. So they have, they can always go outside and really relax and still be in a protected environment because that's what we want is their safety first. Um, but it is a program that absolutely gives them a fighting chance as long as they stick to it and really devote themselves they they leave our program and they can leave our program with a really high hope of success like they they'll be completely like ready and that's what i love about it is that northern it's just not our residential it's not just our behavioral health it's the agency in itself just nurtures children in every possible way so how could i not like dote on my girls like yeah. generation group of new babies i love them so I'm really excited to roll this out. Like I said, we've we've had it in talks for a couple of weeks now, um, and we've been really preparing to launch it. We want to make sure we do it the right way. We want to make sure that we're respectful and modest about everything on how we present ourselves because, unfortunately, the girls do come from really bad situations. Like I said, some are traffic, some are domestic violence, some are drug addiction. So we want to make sure that we show them nothing but strength and respect. We want to make sure that they all get the respect that they deserve and yeah. that their voices are heard. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm so excited about it. I am truly, truly so excited about it. Oh, Judy. Thank you so thank you so much for sharing. Um and about yourself, about what you're gonna do, um, your group, your ladies, your past. Uh it really 
I, I got to learn a lot about you. <laughs> well, thank, thank you for so having me. This is so much fun just hanging out yes. with a friend. Yes. And if you guys want to see more about Judy or find out more, follow her at Judy Justice on Instagram. And Maybe if you're interested in the bells, yes. it's at the PA Liberty Bells. Oh. And uh, hit them up there if you're interested in the bells, interested in volunteering, yes, um, donating. Yes. That's amazing. And, and I'll make sure uh, I send you the Amazon wish list so that if anybody wants to donate to the yeah, send me um, the link and I'll put it in the description. I'll put everything that we talked about in the description below. That'll it, be great. It should be it, sh it shows up everywhere on iTunes, Spotify, and on YouTube. Um Thank you. but yes, it's gonna be great. And uh I'm i I'm just really happy to have interviewed you today and have a chat. Mm -hmm. And uh, next week I have um the owner of Think Thrift is a a local to me thrift store. That's where I got this leopard calf tan. Yeah, girl. Talk about thrifting and how she her inner workings work. And uh, thank that you all for you wearing my on Instagram. No, I just this is the first time I wore this one today. Oh. No, no, but you were at her shop recently, weren't you? Yes, I do Facebook lives <laughs> every Sunday with Rockabilly Key and um. <laughs> And yeah, I just uh yeah, I got this. It's on the video. Yeah, now I'm yes. wearing it. <laughs> I need to fly to Florida. We need to go shopping. Yeah. Yes, I'll take you everywhere that I know. <laughs> yes. Look, I have siblings down there, so we can totally make it a family adventure. Yes. <laughs> I'm down. I'm down. Thank you. Yes. I'm so excited. All right. Thank you, Judy. And uh next mm -hmm. week I'm gonna talk to her. And I thank you all for listening in and have a wonderful week. I'll see you all next Wednesday. Stay well, everyone. Thank you, Jen.